I'm, I'm really excited to have the Birchfield brothers back. How many of you were here last year? Okay, good. Then you, you know, to, know to expect, uh, I've got a little, little thing I want to share with you just in case you haven't heard of them yet. The Birchfield brothers make the kind of music that inspires the soul. Classical guitar, midi marimba, Irish whistles and recorders make these two artists sound like an entire ensemble. The stylistic diversity of Appalachian, classical, jazz, renaissance, praise, worship, and gospel has attributed to the stunning arrangements that have put this Dove-nominated duo in demand. Their concerts are a combination of music, storytelling, little comedy as each plays off the other in a way that's entertaining and captivating. Prime timers love the music they recognize while young people are inspired by the arrangements and intrigued with the instrumentation. Their stylistic diversity bridges the gap of generations. The very first time that I heard this group, years ago, at a uh, choral festival, and uh, they started to play, and, and right at the end of their little spiel, uh, they mentioned they had CDs in back, but only a few, and I was one of the first ones to jump up and run back to make sure they weren't sold out before I had a chance to buy one. I have been enjoying their CDs for years. Um, these guys are the real deal, and so tonight you're going to be blessed. I'm glad you're here. Help me in welcoming the Birchfield brothers, John and Benji. What a great pleasure to be back here with you. We love you folks. We love this church. And we are so grateful to be able to do what our mom and dad used to do. We're going to start with a song that talks about joy, written by Beethoven. Joy, joyful. We adore thee. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Isn't that great news? Great to be here. Let's just praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
sing it together. You know the song, right? Just a closer walk with Granted, Jesus is my plea. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, Lord. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but Thou art strong. I am weak, but Thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. I walk, let me walk close to thee. You sound great tonight. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to You're singing good. <laughs> so good to be back. Uh, we are from Nashville, Tennessee. We grew up in East Tennessee where there was a lot of fiddles and banjos. And uh, we kind of had that influence early in life. Our parents then brought us up to the Chicago area, a little town south of Chicago called Bourbonnet, where we were introduced to classical and jazz and all that. So we sort of combine all these things but we play everything to the glory of God. Every song, whether it's in the hymn book or not, we bring glory to Jesus Christ. We're going to do a tune here that kind of resembles the type of music we grew up on. I'll do a fiddle part on the classical guitar, and Ben will do the banjo part on that instrument. An old gospel song, I Saw the Light.
Chuck, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. That's a fun song. I saw the light. Um, people ask me why I play wh what I play. When, when I was a kid, I wanted to learn some different instruments than my brothers were learning. John was learning guitar. I was starting on the guitar. Uh, Mark was learning bass guitar. And I, I was thinking, ah, I like to bang on things. Even when I'm in a hotel room and there's glass fixtures hanging above the bathroom mirror, I, I tend to hit those and check out the tune of them. Uh, it's, just, it's a bad habit. When I was in school, I would get in trouble by banging on the desk, uh, playing different drum patterns for the students. Um, and then in second grade, I got my first snare drum from John, and it had the Beatles on the drum head. It was, it was really groovy. And that was my first calling. Uh, I said, Mom, I want to become a professional drummer. Uh, so I'm, but I'm thankful for all my music teachers and influences growing up. Uh, I'd like to play a piece that I learned in college when I was there with Doug Carl and Janice. And it's based on Psalm 104. How many are your works, O Lord, in your wisdom? You have created all the creatures of the earth. And the bumblebee is a miraculous creature, isn't it? So I'd like to do a song that celebrates the handiwork of God Almighty, Flight of the Bumblebee. Yeah, our uh, sprinter's doing that right now that we have parked out here. It's, uh, hopefully, we'll get to our next destination. It seems to be, um, we got to drive about 1,700 miles tonight if we can. And um, so, but we'll, hope, we'll hope we can get there and back. And um, uh, we'll just pray the Lord puts his healing hands on the mechanics. I know you're prayer warriors, so maybe you could help us do that. Uh, we loved growing up in our home because our parents were musicians. And the people say, y you're not really brothers, are you? Y you don't look like brothers. Well, we actually are. Uh, I'm John, that's Ben, and we don't look a thing alike because of our, I think it's because of our lifestyle. That's a lifetime of salads, and this is chicken fried steak. So, <laughs> boy, that'll change your looks over time, won't it? Our dad played guitar. He's the first guitarist I listened to. I would sit there and watch him do finger style. Beautiful work. Mom, our mother, a Norwegian lady from Wisconsin, she loved the classics, and she would play beautiful classical pieces. Our dad was born and raised in the Appalachian Mountains in a place called Happy Valley. Mother was raised up and went to the Conservatory School of Music in Chicago. How they got together, I still can't figure that out. Um, but we're influenced by all the, the diversity of that music. Mom always played songs in, in the Appalachian Mountains when we were living there as young, young children that were impressionistic songs like Claire de Lune. And I remember thinking, would that be beautiful on a guitar? And eventually I learned Claire de Lune. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of that for you. By the way, does anybody here speak French? 
that can tell me what clair de lune means. Yes, f- f- light of the moon. A f- the French man right here. Light of the moon is what, it's, is what it means. Now, when my dad asked mother to play clair de lune, being raised in Appalachian, he just asked her to play moonshine. So um, she knew what he meant. He meant clair de lune. But he wasn't going to say that. So um, mom was with us 96 years. And this year she went on to be with the Lord just um, weeks ago. When she was with us, she played in a little band, her accordion. Uh, The youngest member of her band was 79, and he played the uh, marimba. And then the guitar player, Bill, was uh, about 92, and uh, he fell in love three years ago with a lady, and they wanted to get married. She's 89, and their grandchildren didn't want him to get married for some reason, so Bill and Edith eloped. (laughs) That's what Mom said. And then they had their honeymoon at Cracker Barrel. So uh, (laughs) this is a song in honor of our mother, Millie. What a beautiful mom. What a beautiful lady. What a beautiful woman of God. But this is the way I remember her playing Claire de Lune.
Thank you, well, folks. Well, you've heard the music that our mother played. Our dad, totally different. He loved acoustic instruments. He liked uh, anything that had strings on it. He was born and raised in the Appalachian Mountains, so he grew up with that kind of music. We kind of think of him as a loner. He was, he was very much alone much of the time, which isn't a bad thing. He liked to get alone with God by going up a mountain called Chilhawi. He would get up there and he would kneel down and he would pray. Mom talks about it in her book. She wrote a biography. And Dad, when he'd come down off that mountain very close to where you see this photograph here, it wasn't that far from that range, where he would go up there in the 40s, the 1940s and early 50s, and he would just talk to God, he and his Bible. When he'd come down off that mountain, he would whistle a beautiful, warbling, clear whistle. I don't think I ever heard him, but Mom says he did. So the song we're going to do for Dad is called Wayfaring Stranger. And in the middle of it, Ben is going to whistle a part the way Dad would have whistled. This is for our father, Riley. Thank you, thank you so much. This song I'm sure you'll recognize. It's become a classic, written by a couple guys in Nashville.
Thank you. All right. Let me just tell you real quickly about the, the uh, CDs that we have available and DVD. Um, the CD you see on the screen it walk, is called Walk in the Forest. That's got all the fun songs on it, like Fly to the Bumblebee, I Saw the Light. Our finale at the end will be on that CD as well. Then we've got smooth jazz CDs available, good romantic music. Speaking of romantic music, John has a solo guitar CD that's heard on World's Most Beautiful Music Station, and that's love songs from the 30s and 40s. And then we also have classical hymns for music meditation, meditating on the scripture, on the Lord, as you listen to music, or it's good to clean the kitchen with. And then we have Christmas CDs available as well. Now, our, one of our latest uh, projects is a live concert DVD in which you hear everything we do on it and see us do it and all the whistling is on that as well by the way if you buy one CD or DVD you pay regular retail fifteen dollars but when you start getting more like if you get six or more seven or more excuse me you get them for ten dollars a piece Have you ever felt like God was smiling down upon you? I have felt that. I remember a couple times, it's very clear. Once I was a young boy of about nine years old, I came to the altar and 
gave my heart to Christ, and I felt like God was smiling. Another time, we were young musicians. All my brothers moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and we got there in a burned-up car, caught on fire, but we still made it to Nashville, and, and I'll never forget those early times there of wondering where could we play in a town that already has thousands of, of musicians. They, in Nashville alone, there's 10,000 guitar players that are good. And I wondered, where could I play a classical guitar in a town that plays all acoustic guitars and electrics and everything? And one day, the phone rang, and it was a beautiful place called Opryland Hotel, and they said, we've just added a new part to our hotel called uh, the uh, Cascades. And we would like to know if you'd like to play your guitar at this place for about four to eight hours a day, up to seven days a week for the next several years. And I said, yes, I would like to do that. The years I played there, people would come up and request songs. And... Um, it's surprising, the songs they would request. It's pretty amazing, but that's how I learned a lot of tunes. If I didn't know it, I'd say, come back tomorrow and I'll have an arrangement for you, and I'd usually do it that way. And, um, I, you know, I remember thinking about what kind of songs were asked for, and it turned out that a lot of people asked for Amazing Grace. They just wanted to hear that. So I'd play that for them, and they would just gather around and sing and these are not Christian people necessarily they, but they knew that song others asked for old songs of the 1930s and 40s there's something about the melodies getting close to World War II that were just heart-wrenching and they wanted to hear those there's one melody from back in those days called Smile that I thought I would like to take that, even though it's, again, not in the hymn book. Matter of fact, does anybody know who wrote that song, Smile? Any ideas? Because if you know, I'm going to give you my CD that has Smile on it. Does anyone want to take a guess? Okay, you got yourself a new CD. Charlie Chaplin, can you believe he wrote that? All right, now... Um, I take this song and I think of Psalm 67. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. Sounds like a smile, doesn't it? All right, I'm going to play this song the way I did back then. Only Ben is going to whistle. Did you like his whistling? All right, okay. This is Smile, and you ready for this one, Ben?
any of you have served in the military, would you stand and let us thank you for protecting our country? Thank you. Uh, we would love to uh, let you know about the cruise that we are hosting this January. We have flyers at our table. Uh, if you'd like to join us in the Caribbean during winter, there's nothing like it in, with several great gospel artists and speakers on the ship. Uh, earlier in the service, you did a great song, and we're going to do a remake of it. And, uh, you know, when we came in to set up, Pastor Brett was playing this most beautiful music on, on a track. And, you know, 90% of the churches that we do set up in, I have to ask them to turn the music off while we're setting up because it's very noisy and distracting. But his, I said, leave that on. It's amazing. So he's got good taste, doesn't he? All right, yeah. I appreciate that very much especially in this day and age. In this day and age, it's good to pray this prayer from Second Chronicles, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Amen. Uh, the song you did that you sang together was When We All Get to Heaven. Let's do that one. Let's end with a celebration. Here we go.
Thank you all so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So good to be with you tonight. Come up, Pastor.